Alright, welcome back to another Animation Buffet rig review and today we're going to take a look at the rig called Sammy. I'm looking at this rig because the item challenge has started for this month and this rig has been released because the theme is Trick or Treats. If you're familiar with Jerva and Janine, if I'm pronouncing the names correctly, uh, they have released the very popular Spider-Verse rig before and now they have released Sammy. And as always, when you download the rig, you have the photos here that give you a bit of a walkthrough of what's going on, contact information, what the rig is, and of course, the instructions of how to get the rig working in Maya. That being said, you don't have to drop this on the desktop, but you do have to fix a couple things. They do mention this, but I also change this path to my path. You got to change both, copy paste the path for this. And then this is, of course, important that you double click on the Maya M Gear CMD file to open it. You can't just open Maya, but you open it through this command here, double clicking on that, and then everything should be working. That being said, there were some other things I wanted to talk about just quickly. So when I opened the Maya file, I got this. I got an error message. That being said, everything works. You can still move everything. The rig works. It, that command was not about that. It's more about the textures. So when you go in here, all you have to do is Sammy textures. You look at the path here. And it's going to look for the Sammy Diffuse map low JPEG. So go into your Sammy rig deposit here and you have textures and you can see exactly what you need. Sammy Diffuse low. This is what this is looking for. Again, you can look out in the path. Sammy Diffuse map low. Sammy Diffuse map low. You say open. It changes it and he is there. That being said, the props are not there yet. Just click on Sammy prop. It will find the path. And there we go. Everything is ready to go and usable of course everything works so let's look at that actually right away these are the smaller parts they got some awesome props you have the general controls to move things around you have a control to rotate this along the axis of the connections through here and of course you have this handle to move everything so you can rotate this and at the same time rotate this around and of course that still works as an overall move and translate right so you have this on here. There are no additional controls here. You just have rotates either in the channel. Here there's nothing else. You got this going on and same thing here, or you can rotate this around as you wish. You can do change the rotation order. Here you got general props, fun to play with. All of these have nothing else in the channel, so just general props. The bag is very cool because in here you have control to move this around in a stretchy fashion. Of course, you have better controls to really close this up if you want to. You can also scale if that is something that you want to do. Then in here, you have the overall control. But instead of going with the scale and doing all of this, you can click here and you have a close bag option, which is very cool, which also reveals this, that you have that here and one here in case you want to stretch this around. Very neat. You can still use this, of course, in case you got to do something. But here's your close bag on off option. And then the very cool thing here too is that if you use this control and you want to kind of set your bag down, right? It kind of breaks after a bit, but that's okay. It's, it's a bit of a of a change just if you want to put that bag on the surface. But imagine it's on a table or maybe on some surface that's sloped. You can do this if you can if you want to. But you do have this control here and you can see that woo, it's like a magic trick. You can have something where you make this just a bit flat, right? Where the surface is. So it really flattens that as if it was on whatever surface. So it kind of does a little awesome magic trick, which is very, very helpful. You do have, of course, the overall move control. And as you can see, this is for the whole setup of all the props here. That being said, let's move this out of the way. And here is Sammy. And just like in Spider-Verse, you have all leg options here. IKFK blends. You got your roll on the knee. If you want so, if that's something that you fancy, you got your scale, softness, reverse, you have all of that, your IK, up K, you have so many options here for body, global, local. It's very, very detailed, which is awesome. This of course is for both sides. You have the same thing here for your body. So you have your stretch, position, locks, tangents, same thing on your arms, roundness, scale, roll, so many things that you can tweak here, which is really, really fantastic just from a from a customization point of view here. Same thing on the head. So you have your head that you can stretch. You can see this here and you do your maximum stretch or not. So the same thing on the head. You got your stretch, squash, softness, orientation, lock, tangents, and also IKFK if you want to change that to spine and local and head ref. 
you can see this control, which is very, very neat. Down here, you got your overall main controller, but then you have different options. Again, that's for something in case you want to change. I mean, you can use whatever you want to, but usually I use this for uh, pivot changes, right? So you can bring this all down, or maybe the center of gravity is around the chest, and now whoo, it flies around, but the pivot is here, just in case, I don't know, your little creature is flying around if you want to. And there's one more here, so you have lots of options to change things around in case you want to pivot off to the side or whatever you want to do, which is very cool. Of course, going down to the feet, you do have your options of your IK leg. You got your knee control here, or of course you have it here in the channel as we saw, if you just want to go back here. Then in here you have your foot roll that you have through a channel as well, of course. And then you got your toe controls. You can probably stretch this. Yes, you can, which is awesome. A little finer controls here in case you want to squash this a little bit. Can you scale? You can scale, of course. There's some more stuff you can do. Then you have more options here that seem to be rotations. Uh, all right, that's for your dancing pose or if you do like the cigarette squash or whatever you want to do, it's very cool. There's an option back here that gives you a heel rotation. Also needs so lots of different pivot options and rotational options, which is very cool. And of course, you want to go back to changing this into FK, and then that's your FK setup here. So you have an overall move here for your hips, and then you have your leg going back, and you can see this here as your leg goes back and your knee goes back, you got your classic FK controls. If you go back here, still in IK, you have your hip controller as well here, but it gives you a bit of a different option of moving things around, potentially fixing some pops if you do a cycle, very cool. Then you have your overall hip control. Of course, I'm gonna leave the FK on just to see what happens if you do that. There's a smaller control here that gives you another hip control. This is a spine control where you can stretch this. Of course, you go further, it's gonna break the rig, but that's okay, that's normal. Again, going back to just the hip, you don't have that. There's no stretch, it just does the hip control. So again, lots of cool options. Up here, it looks like you got a belly control. Moving this out, you know, if it sits down for squash or a little bit boring, whatever you want to do. It's very, very neat. Then you have your overall root controller that does all the things that you would expect a root to do. And then including in here, you have your separate spine that you can go stretch and move around. Same thing all the way up to here. Speaking of up to here, you have this option here. That's another spine control where you can kind of stretch it and move it around. Of course, depending on what you did with the head control, you're gonna have some problems and deformations, so you can't go too crazy with that. In here, you have another one that gives you a bit of a squash and stretch and rotations. And this one is a spine position, same thing here, where you can kind of change the position depending on what you did with this. I mean, it can get very complicated. Just be very careful as you move things around. It might start breaking things or you might have less of a, an overview like what did i move from my spine but in case you like options this rig as always gives you a ton of options just like the spider-verse rig going back just looking at the back side which i actually did, forgot to look at you got your pockets right you can open these little, little pockets of course you got set pieces there you can put stuff in the back pocket if you want and then you got little details in here as well you can move the knot around you can of course rotate it around and even into details of this this goes all the way to the little pieces here that you can change and rotate not to be confused with these controllers which are the shoulder controllers that can rotate and translate of course but again it's neat for all kinds of details to move this around rotate and translate it's very cool then in here you got another one that's your orbit control so you can still change things like this if you don't want to do the shoulder control it's interesting i mean you can do the same that pivots, but in case you have some adjustments, of course you can always translate, but you can change this, rotate this for fine adjustments. Again, very, very cool. Now, that being said, let me just check. If you change this to your IK arm, then you got your IK controller with a stretchiness that you can, of course, change as I showed you in the controller up there. Now, with that selected, let's see what this orbit does. It doesn't do anything. That seems to be, yeah, you can do translates for some changes, but it doesn't give you an overall orbit if it's in IK mode. That being said, look at this. If you do your IK arm, boop, and I move it around, the wrist is following the forearm. This makes me very, very happy as you have a much more natural move on the wrist. And of course, you can change the wrist options in case you need to 
uh, constrain things. So if we go back into this here, there's all kinds of controls here for a separate wrist, which is very, very cool. What is this here? Ah, these are your sleeve options. Oh, you got multiple ones here to make this bigger or smaller. Very cool. Of course, they all work. Very, very neat. Let's extend this quickly just for better visibility. I see. All right. Yeah, so you got all of this here to move the sleeve back. Ta -da! Reveal this. It's very cool. Interesting. What's this here? That's your mid control for more bendy stuff on IK. That was kind of hidden. Let's go back to the textures here. That is hidden though. That's interesting. So maybe you want to go in there and potentially grab this and open it up so you can see this, right? Maybe. Maybe I should do another look here. Is there something else that's hidden in this rig? There's one in here. What is that? Spine in here that's potentially attached to this. It is not. So it seems to have other controls in here that might be attached to other rigs. But so far, it looks like, nope, these are separate ones. So check out what the rig has hidden. Same thing with your mid bendies but very interesting going back here though i want to just take a look at what's going on here so this must be that side here just like spider verse you got the rake control but you have that's for your uh spreading which is neat but again you can do whatever you want to with that and then you have your overall finger controls all very cool and of course you can translate it's a bit of a extension there what is that that's your root Right, that's the back to your separate thing. Oh, interesting. So I move this and I move this. Ooh. So it does also sleeve control. Now, let me double check here. This is a controller that moves this. This is the same controller, right? I just want to double check. No, so this is your sleeve control that goes back here. Let me just see what's this control. Okay, I'm curious now if I move this forward. Let me just go back and double check. Hands. You have roll, armpit roll, armpit roll. So that must be that um, that thing that I saw there. Yeah, in the FK. So we'll probably go back just to demonstrate armpit roll being, oh, just an armpit roll. Interesting, it doesn't take the whole arm. You do have your scale, the maximum stretch, if I would actually move this out. But what I'm looking at, interesting, there's tweak visibility. Let me turn on tweak visibility on, very curious. All right, so you have extra extra bendies and all kinds of things you can do. Cool. But what I was trying to look at is you have, that's your FK, right? Going back to this, is there a way to rotate the wrist without affecting the sleeve? Just in case, but I guess not. But you can probably just counter it with this in case you need to. I'm just curious if you have this. You got tweak visibility, volume, roundness. I don't think that's what it is. All right. But still very very cool what's back here what is this this is your neck control ik Ooh, with some what's going on here watch out there's some craziness going on that doesn't take the eyes with it so watch out for that also probably depends on what you set up here in your head controls speaking of head this is your overall head so what if you do some form of well I'll just go in the middle rotation takes the head with it in here, there's nothing else, but you can change the head like that. But in here, you would have spine global, and you can see this when you move this, the head stays put. Again, look out, there's some interesting informations in the mesh of the head that doesn't really take the eyes with it. So again, this is, as always, I kind of do a first run through of the rake. There's probably more options to go through that, but this is also cool. You got your squintiness, which is neat. Oh, a quick little, oh, excuse me, going back here. I close, cool. Should probably, you got your little seam mover and same thing to create a smile. It's very cool. Yeah, it's very neat. That seems to be it. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit more and I'm going to look at what all those head options are just in case. So if you do move this around, you can see that the head is very locked. But if you start moving chest stuff, you can see how the eyes and the mouth are sliding around. So this may or may not be going on. Yeah, it goes on everywhere. So if I look at head options here, it could be in terms of squash. Let's take this out. Lock orientations on, tangents on. And what if I now do this? Still going on. So 
not going on when you do this. So there's something in the rotation that's interesting. Now, that being said, it's usually me. Probably don't make any kinds of problems here. Let's just do all of this. You see the tangent. So you have your lock orientation, right? So whatever you have here, it overrides it and you can see this. And now if you move this around, you can see that there is no problem in the mesh, right? Interesting. So just because I want to see here, it seems to be you got tangents options here. Let's go back to one. Let's put tangent back to one here. I'm going to take this, and move this around. That was not it. The second tangent back to one here. Interesting options. I need to see what that really does. And now you move this and you can see now you have potential separate moves here. You can see how the eye slides. So there's something about the tangent options here that if I do this one and I do it again with the rotation on that chest, the eyes are staying put. Interesting. So definitely something I want to look at to see what that does. Of course, volume. Can we do this? Yes, we can. Poor guy, look at that. Totally messed up. It's very cool though. As always, just like with the Spider-Man rig or Spider-Verse rig, you got a lot of option on this. And going back, resetting this, you also have a lot of props. So whatever you're going to do with the Adam challenge, this is going to be a lot of fun to see what people are coming up with, whatever this character is going to stuff in the bag or not. And again, this is a very, very cool option here. So very, very flat and cut off. That is it. If I find anything or if there are any comments or questions, as always, I'm going to update my pinned comment. If you have used the rig and you have other experiences with this and stuff that I, of course, must have not seen on my first walkthrough here, let me know in the comments. Anything that helps other people animate this in a more efficient way or unlocking other options that I missed, let me know in the comments. The comment section is open. So I'm going to leave it at that. Have fun with the Sammy Rake.